Hello, this is a quick screencast from Mike Lee Cooper and this is for Chaos Media, which is York's accessible media group. And we had a session at York Library, the Explore York uh, Library and Learning Centre on Tuesday the 8th of February 2011 and someone asked us a question about annotating PDFs. So uh, we answered a question and we said we'd do a bit of a blog post and a screencast on that particular issue. So uh, you can find Chaos Media at Chaos Media York wordpress.com or chaosmedia.org.uk it's the same thing and uh, I've also got a document on scribed.com which is scribed without any s-c-r-i-b-d.com forward slash doc forward slash 48487429 forward slash annotating hyphen pdf hyphen on hyphen a hyphen mac um, but that link should also be somewhere near this video that you're watching. So, I'd like to look at a PDF um, and editing it, sorry, adding annotations in um, in Preview, which is a free piece of software that Apple Mac provide. So, if I find a PDF that I want to open here, this is the document that's on Scribed, you can check that it opens with um, Preview. Now, if it doesn't, you can go down to Other here and find preview <coughs> which is there and just click always opens with preview so that means that every time you double click on it like this one two there you go so here we are this is preview and you should be able to see a toolbar at the top if you can't if you just see this go into view and go show toolbar there we go you can press command and B as well which you can see there so that will do the same thing on off on off and you might also see, or you might not see, an annotations toolbar at the bottom here. And these are all the features of annotations, which are under tools. It's exactly the same thing. So if you don't see that annotations toolbar, again, click on view, go on show annotations toolbar, which again is the shift, command, and A. Off it goes, on and off. And you can see the view flashing when you select it. So here we are. Here's a document. Um, regardless of what this document may or may not be, let's assume this is something that you want to add an annotation to. Um, presumably, you can see your pages here, so you find your page. If you can't see it, then open the toolbar, click sidebar, there you go. So I've added some annotations here. You'll note that I can't actually select them. So once these, are, these changes have been made, uh, as far as I understand, they are they're done. Um, so that's it. So, let's say I want to add another annotation here. So, if I can go on to view, oh, view, sidebar, we'll say annotations. Um, <clears throat> here's the annotations that have been made. Um, in fact, what I just said about them not being editable, I take that back. It appears that you can make some changes. The reason why I can't change all these is that I've opened it and edited it in another program, so actually you can see these. Also, if someone's previously made an annotation, uh, you can go to Tools, sorry, View, Sidebar, Annotations, that's not the one, sorry, it's, can't remember. I'll carry on. So we'll add an annotation. So we can see down here there's lots of annotations on the bar. Let's say we want to add a note because that's kind of one of the best things to add. So we'll click on notes and straight away this notes panel pops up. Um, where I to have just added this note in this particular piece of software then this note here would be there. But because I've opened it in something else it's not. However, uh, I will add a note so I'll click, I don't know, there somewhere. It's fired me miles away for some unknown reason but this is what I've just selected. I've got colour options here, yellow is quite standard, you can click on and off my note. Um, in fact, while note is selected, I have to untick it to be able to click around without putting another one down. As soon as you double click on it, you can, uh, it takes you to there. So you can make any changes, text I want to change, anything like that. Uh, let's select another one, another annotation, boink, let's, uh, whoop. Let's highlight that. My apologies. Let's put another one there. Another annotation. 
say that's a different topic, give it a colour. There you go. Uh, you can see they've also come up here, so we can fire ourselves around here, see the notes. Uh, can't rename the notes, which is a bit of a problem, but it does tell you what page it's on. Um, you can also I've got circles here, so if we click on this, we can pull it around. This is my last setting. My last setting was green, and it was dashed line, and it was a thick line. You might not want that. You can drag it around what you want to select. You can't add notes to these things, though. That's the only problem. What you might want to do is uh, add a text box to put some notes. Why is this circle here? I don't know. Can re you can move that, shift it around, things like that. Same here with a square. Put square on something. Again, my last feature was dashed. It was blue. Make it neither. Why is it come? There we go. So that's a, that's the solid one. Now this is the tricky part that, that that throws me off all the time. Is say I want to start scrolling around and highlighting. I highlighted some text. That's what I want to do next. I can't double click on, on, on the text without doing another box and that's infuriating. Now there's a very simple way of getting around this is either untick the box that you had selected, sorry the annotation tool that you had selected, um, or click on text there and then you can do this. So let's say we want to highlight, we'll select this bit we want to highlight, there we go there's the highlight function down there, highlighted again, pick the colour. Last time I was on purple. I would like it to be on yellow. It's not working. You can change the colour though. It has been done in this very document, as you can see below. Different colours, different annotations. It's possible. All the same, we've got highlight text, we've got strike through, underline, they're all down here. And they're all they've all got colour options, line thickness options. And finally there's a fonts option you can pick your fonts like you're used to, bold, italic, size, use the slider, get colours, all sorts of things. Uh, one thing to note actually with the colours is that you can only use these colours if you've created a text box. So this was a text box here. You can't see it because again it's it's not it's been opened in another program and resaved so that it loses the data but where I to have created a text box. Um, who knows where that's gone? There it is. Very unusually big for some unknown reason. I shall delete. I'll at least try to delete that. I'll untick. See what we can do. I'll try and create another text box. There we go. So, say I create a text box and different colored text. I can change the colour of this using that, but what I can't do is I can't unhighlight this. I can't go through there and I can't change the colour of this text. So that's that's a bit of an issue, but then again there's the highlighter for that feature, so that's probably a way around it. Now for anyone who's not really too keen on finding these really small icons, then um, you can do it by, say you want to add some highlight, you could, I shall delete that. Say you want some highlight, to highlight a word, you could select that word and then you could go to tools, you can go to annotate, and you can go to highlight text. Or you can do whatever you want, tools, annotate, add arrow, there's the arrow. I don't quite understand why this exists, it's very odd. Um, not a very good example, tools, annotate, Add rectangle, there we go, there's a rectangle. And again, up, down, left, right, you can move it around with the keys on the keyboard, no problem. And that's actually about it. So again, we've got all our annotations, our notes, our text boxes here by page number. Um, can't rename them, unfortunately, or at least not to my knowledge, which is, which is a bit of a shame because it, it makes it slightly more difficult to navigate, but that said, it does the job. If you... Um, if you find the note, then there you go. There's your notes thing, your notes sidebar to the left, which sometimes turns itself off. There you, there you go, it's gone. It's only there when you've got notes selected. 
you can hide it. You can go hide bar. Sorry. View. Hide notes. There you go. If you want to get rid of it, just hide it. And that's actually it. So hopefully this is useful for people. Um, I will save it. File save. I'll close the document. I will find finder. Let's open it again. And I'll go to view. Show annotations toolbar. View. Show notes. Can I show notes? There we go. Notes is already open. So as you can see, the note that I added last time, where this would have been emailed to someone else and they have preview as well, they can move the note, they can delete the note, they can read the note, they can add to the note, they can do anything. And this also includes, if I go to view, sidebar, and annotations again, that also includes all of these that I've added. I could if I really wanted, I could delete the whole lot. And there you go, no annotations. Or at least no annotations that I made last time. So these, however, screenshots here, images that have been dropped in, things like this. These are annotations I did last time. Um, if, if you open it in any other software outside of Preview, you'll lose the ability to adjust your annotations. So this is fixed now. So if I was to want to get rid of these, I would have to uh, probably redo it or something, um, maybe retype it in OpenOffice or Microsoft Word or, or put a, some image over the top to mask it. So please try and keep within preview. So hopefully that answers the question. If you have any more questions, feel free to visit chaosmedia.org.uk. I will not save these features. Uh, this is our website. Thank you very much. And if you'd like to find out any more information, please feel free to visit Google. Uh, one of the websites I talked about is, is called opensourcemac.org. So if you want to find some open source software, you can look on here. We've got all sorts of things for the Mac. Uh, one of the particular PDF software um, applications on here is Formulate Pro, which is a little bit like Preview, uh, only you can add images and it's got a few different features. It's, it's quite a bit easier to use. I will just open the uh, interface very quickly just so I can show you what it's like. It is open with Formulate Pro. It's just the same. This is the PDF we were just looking at in preview, except uh, some of the added functionality is there you go, the text box. There's a square, essentially, it's an annotation, a circle. That's squiggle if you want to write something by hand. It's a cross. And um, you can also place images. Place image. So let's find a screenshot. There we go. So you can place images. And it can be a bit fiddly though. There you go. It's in. And uh, that's it. So it's a bit easier actually, Formulate Pro, depending on what your preferences are. But as I say, uh, they don't. The two pieces of software don't communicate with each other, so you have to use one or the other. And that's it. Thank you very much.